Thanks for listening to Investor Insights, a behind-the-scenes look at investing with Fund That Flip. This series provides an insider's look at how our business works and answers your frequently asked questions so that you can make better investment decisions with your hard-earned capital. Now, our founder and CEO, Matt Rodak. Thank you for joining on this episode of Investor Insights. This is Matt Rodak, your host, founder and CEO of Fund That Flip. Today, we are going to be talking about the latest and greatest product we recently rolled out, the pre-funding note fund, or as we call it, PFNF. This is a new product that allows investors to passively invest in a diversified pool of short-term real estate-backed loans via a short-term line of credit. We'll be covering how it works, why you might want to invest in it, and answering some frequently asked questions about PFNF. Now, in case you're picking this up on one of the podcast applications, I wanted to let you know uh, that we're doing a PowerPoint presentation to go with this one to help explain some of the concepts. So while we'll talk through everything, it may be beneficial to go on over to our blog at fundnetflip.com and watch the video of this episode as well. All right, before we jump in, just a message from the legal team. Past performance is not indicative of future performance. No returns are guaranteed, and these types of investments involve a high degree of risk. Direct and indirect purchase of real estate property involves significant risks. Are not bank deposits, are not insured by the FDIC or by any other federal government agency, and are not guaranteed by Fund That Flip, Inc., and may lose value. Fund That Flip does not make investment recommendations, and any information discussed herein should not be construed as such. Before making any investment, you must read the related private placement memorandum and investment documents. We recommend that you consult with a financial advisor, attorney, accountant, and any other professional that can help you uh, to understand and assess the risks associated with any investment opportunity. Fund That Flip Inc. is able to make investment opportunities available only to accredited investors who submit required verification. Okay. Agenda for this special episode, uh, we'll be giving a quick company overview, talking about the reason we developed this product, some of the benefits of investing in these offerings, how the various fund that flip entities all relate to one another, how the series note offerings works, uh, how the fund generates income and liquidity, and then we'll wrap up with some frequently asked questions. All right, so first and foremost, why do we exist? Our mission statement here is to enable our clients to create wealth and improve communities by investing in real estate. And we do this for two distinct groups. For our borrowers, we do this by being a responsible source of capital so they can profitably scale their business. And for lenders on our platform, we do this by giving them access to high quality loans. To date, we financed over 400 million of projects, returning over 200 million back to investors. We've paid out 20 million in interest payments. Uh, this is on uh, 1,400 loans with the average size of around 300K per loan. Historically, the gross yield on our loans has been just under 11%. Uh, we've been doing this now for just over five years, and we have 42 employees, all specializing in real estate, investing, and technology, and we've raised uh, just over $13 million of venture capital dollars. Um, we've also made the Inc. Magazine fastest growing private companies now for two consecutive years. We've been featured in Forbes, Yahoo, uh, American Association of Private Lenders, and we're uh, most recently just ranked number 17 on the Financial Times fastest growing companies. This is all to say we've been at this for some time now and have, uh, have found some uh, reasonable measure of success, both on our portfolio, as well as rec recognition, uh, you know, from, from others. All right. So why did we come out with this new product? Uh, it's important to note that this product has been in the works since, uh, since really the, um, the end of 2019 and is really a result of the feedback we have received over the years from investors on our platform. There has been uh, some consistent themes over the years from investors, which is what led to us developing this product. Uh, the first thing that we, we heard was that investor, <clears throat> investors wanted the ability to maximize diversification across borrowers, geographies, and properties. And while the minimum investment on our platform is relatively low at, at $5,000, this still limits the amount of loans an investor can diversify with uh, you know, by a power of 5,000. So if an investor has, let's say, $50,000 to deploy, the most loans they can diversify into is 10. So one area we were trying to solve for was ability to gain broader diversification while still keeping the, the minimum investment size around $5,000, which is about as low as we can go for it to make sense for our business. And we'll talk about how PFNF achieves this goal. The second thing we heard often was that certain investors had more capital that they wanted to deploy, but doing so through individual investments was laborious from a deployment and management standpoint. Some find choosing multiple investments more time consuming than they wish and prefer to just deploy their capital in fewer, fewer investments, but still like the idea of being diversified across multiple different projects. And the third thing we heard a lot was a desire to have more certainty around principal repayment. 
while an individual loan may have a maturity date of say nine or 12 months, some loans pay back before the maturity date while others may, may get extended beyond that maturity date. Um, you know, as, as a borrower may need additional time to finish the project or get it listed and sold. So for some investors, this made it you know, difficult to plan for liquidity and something that uh, you know, our investors would prefer you know, more certainty around. So to summarize all this, the reason uh, you know, that we came up with this product was one, you know, to the ability to gain broader diversification was still having you know, small investment amounts, a simpler way to deploy more capital and more certainty around principal and maturity. So this leads into the key benefits uh, we see from investing in PFNF. The first one is diversification. With a single investment, you will get exposure to multiple loans, uh, which helps increase diversification to projects, to borrowers, and to geography. So one investment is gonna get you a broad, a broad swath of different, different types of investments. The second thing we have is a fixed maturity date. So each note has a fixed maturity, uh, which really helps investors to have greater certainty on when uh, their principal dollars will be repaid. The next benefit, which is which is very unique to uh, PFNF, is the short duration exposure. So the pre-funding note fund, as the name suggests, is unique in that uh, you are investing in a line of credit that is used to pre-fund the loans and construction draws prior to either fully syndicating them on our platform or selling these whole loans off to institutions. So what this means is that your capital is exposed, again, to a variety of different loans, right? It invests in, in, in virtually every loan that we originate, but only for a short period of time until the, that loan is either fully syndicated on the platform or uh, sold as a whole loan off to one of our institutional investors. Next is passive. Again, uh, you will not need to select individual investments, um, but will still receive monthly payments. So one investment, again, gets you uh, a very passive way to get exposure to a lot of different, you know, a lot of different deals, again, on the short duration period. Um, but is, is, is a bit more passive than having to go through and select uh, one-off projects. And the last point here on benefits is high utilization, as we call it, right? So one thing we've heard from investors is the cycle time in and out of investments uh, means that your capital isn't always working. So investing in a strategy allows you to, again, make one investment and keep your capital earning. Um, and we'll also talk a little bit later on about how, you know, you'll be able to roll over uh, investments as they mature and, and again, keep that, keep that capital working. So next up, let's see how uh, all of this works. So we'll be talking about a, a number of different entities throughout the presentation, and think it's important um, to lay out, you know, how these entities all relate with one another. So at the top is Fund That Flip Inc. Fund That Flip Inc. is our parent company, um, where all of our employees, you know, work, where our IP is head, you know, is owned, uh, and, and is really the main operating company of the of, of the business. Fund That Flip Inc. then wholly owns FTF Lending LLC, or our Lendco, as we call it. And FTF Lending is the, is the company that originates all of our mortgages, as well as um, issues all of our borrower-dependent notes, which are the securities that if you're investing in our platform, you're investing in. And uh, this entity is also protected by an indentured trustee in a bankruptcy remote structure. And really, the only thing that's in this entity, again, is, uh, is the assets, which are our mortgages, and the liabilities, which are our, our borrower-dependent notes, as well as our lines of credit that we use to fund those mortgages. The other entity um, is called FTF Fund Management LLC. This is the entity that was set up to manage our different, uh, our fund structures. So again, this is wholly owned by Fund That Flip Inc. And this is the entity uh, that manages uh, the next entity here, the pre-funding note fund. So uh, FTF Fund Management is really uh, set up just to, to be the manager of the fund. Uh, and then the pre-funding note fund is the entity that uh, as an investor into the strategy that you're actually investing in. So if we bring all this together, right, investors invest capital through a note, through a series note into pre-funding note fund. And in exchange for that capital, again, receive a note back. Uh, the pre-funding note fund then takes that capital that was raised from investors and lends it out to our lending company, FTF Lending LLC. And in exchange for the capital that the pre-funding note fund provides to the Lendco, um, the Lenco issues back to the pre-funding note fund, a line of credit. So these are the different entities that are involved um, in terms of how, you know, capital gets into uh, the note fund and then back over to lending to again, pre-fund uh, new loans as well as to fund construction draws before they're either syndicated or uh, sold as whole loans to investors. So throughout the discussion, I've, I've mentioned a series note listing, right? Or series note. So what exactly is a series note? The short answer is that it's a security that you're purchasing when you make an investment into PNF, PFNF. So the first thing to understand is that it is a debt instrument. You are purchasing a note uh, that is issued by PFNF, right? So uh, like many other debt investments, it has a maturity date indicating when PFNF will repay your principal. It has a, um, it has a fixed rate of interest attached to that, right? So how much uh, will PFNF pay you in exchange for um, you lending it capital? 
Um, right. And I think a very important distinction here is that it is not an equity interest in PFNF. So you're not making a, an equity investment into the fund, but as it, as a, the name suggests, right, series note listing, it is, it is a debt instrument. It is a note, right? So like any other debt investment, uh, the note is serviced and principal is repaid um, by the income and the cash flows generated by the issuer, which in this case is PFNF, the prefunding note fund. Uh, so at a very high level, again, the thing to remember here is you are investing in a debt instrument. Uh, debt instruments have maturity dates, they have principal payments, they are not equity investments, and that note is serviced by ultimately the cash flows that the entity, right, PFNF, generates from uh, its business operations. So that begs the question, how does PFNF uh, generate money and how does it uh, ultimately uh, earn income to service the note? So. Uh, PFNF invests the capital that it raises via, the, via these series notes into a pre-funding line of credit, again, issued back to FTF lending. So um, PFNF is going to generate income from interest payments um, made by borrowers related to these underlying mortgages that are ultimately secured by the line of credit. So line of credit gets issued from, uh, you know, from PFNF to FTF lending. FTF lending uses that money to issue mortgages as mortgages collect interest from borrowers and um, that interest flows ultimately back through the line of credit and then back to investors. And we'll take a closer look at, at this and, and how the money flows here in a second. PFNF also generates liquidity, right, to repay principal on these series notes through the repayment of this line of credit. Again, as FTF lending is selling loans either out onto the platform or to institutional whole loan buyers. So we're able to cycle um, not just interest payments and create liquidity through the interest payments, but also create principal liquidity um, by selling these whole mortgages off to uh, to individual investors on our platform or to institutions, um, and creating a decent amount of, of velocity, if you will, on that on that principle. Okay, so let's take another look at a diagram of how funds flow from an investor into the PFNF and ultimately back through to investors. So if we start here with uh, the investor down in the bottom of our screen, and let's just say a simple example of an investor that makes a ten thousand dollar investment in a series note offering that is paying a seven percent yield and has a six month term. And again, these interest rates and terms will vary depending on a, on a lot of factors. But for example's sake, let's go with a 7% in a six month term. Uh, that investment uh, per the arrow here uh, goes to the PFNF. Uh, PFNF then takes that $10,000 investment uh, and also other investments, right? Also made into that, that same series note offering and invests via a line of credit provided to FTF Lending, which is our lending company, right? Now, FTF Lending, uh, uh, uses this line of credit to originate a mortgage. So we can see how investors capital flows to PFNF uh, to the Lenco via a line of credit and ultimately is used to fund a mortgage. Now, eventually what's gonna happen here is a, a loan buyer, uh, whether via our syndicated platform or institutional whole loan buyer, purchases this mortgage and the cash from that investment goes back to FTF lending, which uses it to pay down the line of credit uh, which is then returned back to the pre-funding note fund, which when a series note, you know, becomes due at the end of maturity is used to repay, repay investor capital uh, or is potentially recycled back via the line of credit for the next loan, right? So if we kind of look at the full circle, we see how uh, money comes in from investor and flows all the way through to a mortgage. And then eventually a loan buyer purchases that mortgage off the pre-funding line. Money goes back through lending, back, back to PFNF through the line of credit. And then again, as notes become due, um, are recycled back to the investor or potentially, um, you know, cycled back through the line of credit to the next mortgage that needs to be originated. A very simple flow of, of how, how the cash moves from investors through to mortgages and then back to investors. Um, again, all through this concept of the line of credit, which again, the Lenco uses for pre-funding mortgages and or uh, advancing construction draws. So moving on here, right? And because PFNF provides pre-funding effectively, it effectively invests in every project that we finance, um, but again, only for a short period of time. Uh, that said, since your investment will be exposed to every loan that we originate, it's important that you understand our underwriting procedures at the lending company level. So at a very high level, how it works, um, you know, how our underwriting process works is a borrower will come to us and make a submission either through our online application or through a business development rep. Um, they'll let us know, hey, I've got a project that needs funding. Only about a third of those projects that get submitted, um, you know, pass our initial screen and those third that do pass our initial screen get passed on to our underwriting team. So we've got a full team um, in our Cleveland office that analyzes these projects, uh, looking at uh, the purchase price, the statement of work, what we think the home will be worth after the work is done, stress testing different scenarios around, um, you know, different sales prices, different uh, potential outcomes for the amount of work that has to happen. 
And then only about half of those, about 15% of the initial uh, initial applications that were, were submitted, um, make it through to this next due diligence phase. And this is where we're going to be doing um, you know, third-party appraisals, um, a deeper dive on our valuations. We're doing title reviews, background checks, and credit checks on the borrower, and really making sure that we have uh, we feel good about you know, the overall strategy and, and borrow of the project. Out of those 15%, about 5 or 6% end up getting funded. Uh, and, and when we fund a project, we're doing a, a complete loan origination process. So this is uh, ensuring we've got a first position mortgage, um, securing title insurance and a lender policy title insurance, um, checking for property casualty insurance on the on the asset, um, and ultimately getting a personal guarantee from the borrower. So a very thorough process, again, five, six percent of uh, what gets submitted to us ultimately gets funded, um, which has uh, which has been uh, what's helped us uh, maintain a, a a profitable book of business for 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 ourselves and for our lenders. And a more detailed uh, view and, and you know high level kind of what our underwriting standards is, one of the things that's very important to us is making sure that one, we've got uh, an experienced borrower that knows how to operate a project and there's also alignment of interest. So what we're looking for from our borrowers is, is prior experience. Typically we need to see a minimum of uh, two similar, similar projects completed in the last 12 months. Again, we're running background and credit, looking for a history of responsible financial behavior. Uh, we're also doing a review of personal financials, ensuring the borrower has resources to meet capital requirements for completing the project and servicing their debt. Um, any majority members uh, of the borrower's legal entity um, must also sign a personal guarantee. And to that effect, right, we're making business pur purpose loans. So all of our loans are made to some type of a corporation, whether that's an LLC or an S Corp, um, and none of these properties are, are allowed to be owner occupied. From a project perspective, what are we looking for is we're looking for after all costs, right? Um, purchase price, renovation, carrying costs, soft costs, sales costs. We like to see at least a 10% profit margin in the project. And again, we're stress testing this for you know lower sales prices, increased rehab budgets, extended time to complete it, um, to make sure that there's enough downside protection and cushion um, to keep the borrower aligned around making a profit. We're also looking for uh, loan to cost metrics. So this is um, our total loan amount divided by the total cost of the project, um, costs for this exercise being purchase price and renovation budget. And we like to make sure that our loan to cost doesn't exceed 85%. So this effectively means that the borrower is going to have 15% of the costs, um, you know, contributed by, you know, by their equity. We also like to see a loan to after renovated value of 70% or less. So this is our total loan amount divided by uh, the value of the property or the expected value of the property once the work has been completed. Uh, so what this tells us is that when the project's finished, there's gonna be about 30% or more uh, equity uh, once again, once it's completed. We're using uh, internal data sets and proprietary risk rating um, you know, that we've developed over the years uh, to help us with these, these valuations uh, that we're looking at. Uh, and again, we're also using uh, third-party appraisal services um, in most instances to confirm, you know, our valuations that we come up with to make sure we've got some local, local eyes on the, on the property as well. You know, and what's super important is that we're managing construction draws to ensure that our position in the loan um, is always less than the value, uh, the value of the property and ultimately the cost of the project. So we always want to make sure there's a cushion between our attachment point and both the cost of the project as well as, um, you know, the value of the home. So looking at this last point in, in a, a bit, a bit greater detail here is um, is kind of how this this may look uh, this may look um, simply kind of graphically and kind of how we think about structuring our loan. So this uh, this beigeish line, as you can see, is our total loan distribution. Our green teal line is the cost of the project, and our darker blue line is the you know the value of the property. And obviously, these things don't always move linearly, and and um, you know aren't quite this simple. But again, for example's sake. Um, to demonstrate, you know, theoretically what we're trying to manage, right? So on this first distribution, right? So the, the, the money that goes out the door when we close the loan um, is always going to be less than both the value of the property as well as, you know, typically the cost of the project at this point is similar to the value of the property. Assuming if, you know, they're buying the house for $100,000, the house is about worth $100,000. So this first uh, cushion here, right, is our, our loan distribution. We always want to keep that 15% um, below uh, this, this cost of the project. Right, so um, we follow these lines, right, and we get to the second distribution, right. So at this point, the borrower has progressed some work, has maybe you know done some of the the painting or the new floors or installed the kitchens or whatever the case may be, depending on the the project's budget. Um, our cost has started to uh, to go up, right, as we've invested more in the project. But we've also started to create some value. So now our our value line starts to break away a little bit from our costs again as we're we're creating uh, value around the project, but. Um, 
the amount that we're distributing is still kind of keeping that 15% margin. Now, as the project continues to progress and we're adding additional more costs and we're working towards, in this case, simple example, third distribution and final distribution, uh, costs are moving up somewhat linearly and uh, we're creating additional value, right? So now the home is complete. Um, everything is done. Maybe it's new mechanicals, a new roof, a new floor plan, new paint. This is really where the value is created by our customers, by our customer, by our borrowers, right? So by the time we get done, our distribution and the value of the property, again, on a minimum basis, um, should have created a 30% uh, profit margin or, or cushion um, from our attachment point relative to the value of the property. So again, a somewhat simplified example, but um, used to demonstrate, you know, how we're trying to manage um, our distribution from a from a loan perspective relative to the cost of the project as well as relative to the value of the property as, as that value is going up as work is being done on the on the home so moving kind of into the the next phase here and a question that we get is you know how's our portfolio performed um, particularly in light of you know our growth over the years and um, what we like to show is the consistency in our our uh, different ratios that we underwrite to so um, Quickly, we'll go through this, right? So we've talked about average after repair LTV. So again, this is the total loan amount divided by the estimated after repair value. And as we saw on a, on a previous screen, we like to keep that under 70%. And as you can see, kind of going back 12 plus months, uh, historically, the loans we've originated have been more in that 60 to 65% range, right? So, you know, well within our, our, our comfort level of keeping it under 70, uh, and more importantly, typically keeping it under 65. So again, um, projects complete, our loan amount dispersed, we've got about a you know 35, sometimes 40% margin uh, or cushion in terms of you know our attachment point and the relative value of the property. The next metrics that, that we look at that we think is very important is the average as is loan to value. So this again, if you look at the definition here, this first distribution, right? How much money do we put out the door when we originate the loan divided by the purchase price? And again, we're trying to keep this under you know 85%, 80-85% so that our borrower always has again. 15, 20% um, equity, right, in the project ahead of us. And as you can see, again, over the past 12 or so months, 12 plus months, uh, we've, we've, we've historically been in the 70, 75, 80 range. Um, again, so this is saying that, you know, our borrowers are coming with, you know, at least 15%, but in most cases, uh, more than that, 20, 25% down payments, um, which again, we think is good from a, a risk perspective. And particularly for this uh, PFNF product, this is the loan to value that really matters for this short duration uh, pre-funding line before the loan's ultimately sold or syndicated. And then the last one that we look at here is the average loan to cost. So again, this is the total loan amount divided by the sum of both the purchase price and the estimated renovation budget. So again, keeping um, our total loan amount as a percentage of cost under that 85% mark. And again, looking back over the past you know, more than a year, um, this is what our data looks like. So keeping it into that 80-85 band uh, for the most part, um, again, uh, demonstrating that our borrowers are well aligned with, uh, with their own capital in the projects. All right, so to keep us m moving along here, some frequently asked questions that we, we often get about the pre-funding note fund specifically. So the first question that we, we often get is, how will my investment be treated from a tax perspective? So the answer to that is because this is an interest bearing investment, you will receive a 1099 INT. And we will, uh, we will strive to have these two investors by the end of February. So you will get a, a 1099 uh, with all of your interests earned, specifically from PFNF. Next question is, is there a cap on how much can be raised into the fund? And the answer to this one is the fund is open-ended, um, meaning we may raise additional capital or reduce the assets on a proportionate basis at any time. And again, because we're raising capital into this fund via debt, um, gives us a, a decent amount of flexibility to you know uh, flex up and flex down depending on how much capital is needed to fund the forward pipeline on a, on a pre-funding basis. Next question is, how will interest distributions be made? So the PFNF will be making uh, distributions of interest income on a monthly basis, very similar to how we do um, on all of our other investments. And these will be uh, made either, either directly into your wallet, um, if you've got your wallet set up on the platform or into a, directly into a bank account that you designate. So all of that can be set up on your lender dashboard and you can tell us where you want the money, either back into the wallet or directly back into your bank. Uh, but these distributions are made on a, on a monthly basis. To that point, some, some folks have asked, can I roll my interest distributions uh, right back into the pre-funding note fund? And for now, um, in order to keep accounting and, and record keeping relatively simple, we are planning on making distributions of all interest um, back to investors on a monthly basis. Again, you're, you're welcome to accrue those and invest um, into either new series note offerings or other investments, but um, you, will, you, will, you can't expect to, to get those interest distributions um, you know, allocated to you on a monthly basis. 
Next question is, can I extend the maturity date of my note in order to keep my capital working? And um, the way we're thinking about this right now is, is we do expect to have, you know, new note offerings available on a rolling basis, you know, and, and do expect to have them open almost just about every month. So um, what you will be able to do is reinvest your return of principal into a new note as they're available. Um, and, and likely what we'll be doing is as we're approaching maturity dates, uh, we'll be giving investors that you know are about to mature an opportunity to invest in uh, new notes that are either currently open or will be opening you know in the in the near term. So, not exactly a rollover, but um, you know in, in a lot of ways it will will provide a, a, a very similar function. Next question is what happens if fund that flip fund that flip goes out of business? So what if our, our parent company goes out of business? So the assets of the, the PFNF are pledged to an indentured trustee. Uh, providing a, a very similar bankruptcy remote structure that we have for all of the investments on our platform. So if, if fund that flip were to, to, to become in default, right, under the indenture, uh, which includes a, a bankruptcy or an insolvency, uh, this trustee, this third party indenture trustee would step in to um, start to manage the cash flows of the fund per that indenture agreement. And that indenture agreement is available as part of the materials to you when you make an investment and, and would certainly encourage everyone to, to check that out. And then last, what are the underlying assets of the fund? Uh, we talked about this um, you know, throughout the presentation, but uh, the main asset and really the only asset of the, the PFNF is this line of credit that we've issued to FTF lending. Um, so there's the line of credit as well as obviously cash that's held in PFNF that's not currently deployed um, into, into the line of credit, right? And again, these proceeds are, uh, are, are provided to fund these, these, these underlying uh, mortgages secured by residential real estate. So that is it. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to learn a little bit more about our, our newest product, uh, the PFNF. We're very excited about it. We've had uh, a great early reception um, to this from investors and look forward to continuing to, to grow it and continue to make um, this product available to our investors. If you have any additional questions that were, weren't answered here, please feel to send us an email at investorrelations at fundthatflip.com or you can always give us a call at 646-895-6090. Otherwise, check out fundthatflip.com. Uh, we've got PFNF offerings open pretty much on a rolling basis right now and, and into the future. So again, thanks for, uh, thanks for listening. Hopefully this was helpful. And again, any questions, feel, to re feel free to reach out, out to us anytime. That's it. Matt Rodak signing off.